Well, deer season 2023 in South Carolina is over. And I wouldn't say it was a bust, but I'm not gonna say that it was amazing either. We came away with one doe, decent sized, about 100 pounds, uh, but that was after, man, I don't know, like 28 hunts. I mean, we just really sucked it this year. Uh, so as you can see, the garage is a mess. We got crap everywhere, Christmas is over. Um, we were testing the generator yesterday, making sure that was running. And now I've got to spend some time cleaning up. We've got one bag of deer corn left and we're gonna take that with us today. But, uh, but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out to the property. We're gonna do a little bit of tour of the property and uh, we're gonna put some deer corn out because in addition to deer out there, there's also pigs. So pig season is about to go into overdrive. Let's have some fun. So I said that uh, deer season, and we're heading out to the we're heading out to the property now. But I was thinking about this, and uh, deer season really wasn't great. We got the one doe, um, and uh, and I'll tell you the story about how we got that one in a minute. Uh, there were actually a couple of other deer that I shot this year, but uh, but you know they didn't really <laughs> they didn't work out. Uh, the first one was an early morning hunt, and I was up in a stand about 30 feet off the ground. It was an elevated blind over an open uh, open field, uh, long and narrow, and a doe came out. Uh, real quick and took a corner and I made the shot. It was a quick shot, but I made the shot and uh, When I went to tracker there was no blood trail at all And so I tracked her for a couple of hours uh, off into the woods thought I had her trail There was no blood. I could just see where the footprints were and um, and never found her and uh, Turns out the next day we found her because the buzzards were circling and the coyotes had been there And so we actually found the body all eaten up, which was a, a, a terrible thing uh, the other one was uh, a, a small deer that I was shooting. It was right at dusk. It was in a heavily wooded area down on a creek bottom, and it was real hard to tell the size of the deer. And after I shot it, I realized that uh, that it was uh, you know a small, maybe a yearling. So it wasn't very big. I got a buddy that processes deer, and it's you know a deer that size. It just wasn't worth taking to the processor. And so he said he'd do it for me. And when he got it done, he said, "Hey, there's not there's not much meat here." And so I just told him to keep it. Uh, so reality is, I shot two, uh, took none home. And then this one that I did get for the for the year, um, that one was about a hundred pound doe, and that was a pretty neat that was a pretty neat hunt. So that was right toward the end of the season, and uh, I was sitting in the stand, and it was over a field with a feeder in it, and it was just about too dark to shoot, almost, but it was an open field, so there was plenty of light. And I'm sitting in the stand, and I pull out my thermal uh, monocular, and I've got a thermal that I use when we hunt pigs. So I pull this thermal out. And I start looking back into the shadows just to see if there's anything coming because I know that, uh, that, that I can't see anything but there might be something there. And sure enough, I see, uh, I see a deer come out. Now, keeping in mind that I just shot that yearling a little while earlier, I was real cautious about size. And a thermal won't show you three dimension. It's, everything's two dimensional. So it's real hard to gauge size when you're looking at something in black and white. So anyway, I waited and another one came and then a third one. And you could tell by the size that the third one, that was the big, that was the bigger deer. So I watched them and watched them until they got out into the clearing. This deer came out and she headed over to the feeder and put her head down and started feeding and I took the shot and dropped her right in her tracks. So it was a great, it was a great opportunity. I was glad to get it because I hadn't, I hadn't taken a, a deer home yet. Uh, and, uh, and so we took it out to the processor, got it back yesterday. And it turned out that we had about 30 pounds of meat, which is, which is pretty good. So we had about 20 pounds of ground. Uh, of course we got the loins, a back strap, and a couple other pieces we got some uh, some uh, cubed so uh, we're gonna enjoy that but uh, that was the hunt so far this year now it was my worst hunt I started I started hunting four years ago so the first year that I hunted uh, I went out and I actually only hunted one day and I took three deer that day uh, best hunt ever interestingly and then uh, and then the second year went out and I took my first buck ever it wasn't a huge buck it was a small six point uh, and I, I'll, maybe I'll show you some pictures of that. I've got it on the wall at the house. It was a small six point. But, um, but then that last year, uh, we took a couple of doe. And so we had meat. Every year we had some meat. Uh, and this year was my worst, my worst hunt. So we're gonna go back and I'm gonna take a look at what we did. I hunt with a couple of my sons. Uh, I hunt with Jake and I hunt with Josh and they like to hunt with me. And so we're gonna take a look and see maybe what we could do better. I know we were having problems this year with the feeders. They were intermittently working. The batteries would die, the things would get clogged. Uh, we had some raccoons and some squirrels that were breaking into feeders and, and eating everything and open them up to the rain and they'd get rotted all up in the feeder. Uh, so we, we really did struggle this year. Uh, my buddy who hunts with me, Ron, I think he took home, I, I, between he and his son, I think they took home eight deer this season. Uh, so anyway, it, it, was, it was a rough year for deer hunting, but uh, like I said, 
pig hunting in South Carolina is year round and there's no limitation to it. You can kill as many as you want. And we actually we actually took two earlier this week. We went out into the swamps and, and out into the rivers and we took two. And so we're gonna head back out here in another week or so and see if we can take some more. Uh, so um, we did make it up with fish though. And uh, we got offshore at Charleston, we went out to the Three Mile Reef and we, uh, we just absolutely killed it on sheep's head and, uh, and some others. Uh, we got some red drum, we got some black drum, we just absolutely killed it. So uh, I made up for the lack of uh, venison this year with uh, influx of fish. There's enough pigs out here that we don't, we don't generally wander around without something. So, all right, let's go. This is one of our hog traps for the property. It's uh, careful the mud over there. This is uh, so. This is one of our old ones. We don't use this one anymore um, because you, in South Carolina you need to have a, an escape for the deer if they get caught in it. But uh, but this is one of the ones that we used to use. And um, and as you can see, the way it's set up, and I can go into this in another video. But the way this is set up is with a trigger. So this big heavy gate here uh, drops down in front. And then in the back, you can see a bunch of old corn cobs. And uh, the last big pig we got in here was several years ago. And if you look way in the back, you can see the bottom bar is bent up. And that's actually the, the hog that did it. It was a 200 pound boar that got in here and then he wanted out bad. And so he started hitting that bar and tried to bend the whole thing out. And uh, in the back, there's a couple of hooks and there's a wire that runs through a pulley system down the back. And it hooks into, the, it hooks into those hooks. And we just pile corn and, and other stuff that the pigs might eat around the bar, it's a pretty simple system. And once the pig has eaten enough of it, it actually loosens the bar, probably smacks it in the face in the process, I don't know. And then this whole gate drops, and then they're stuck. So uh, so it's been a couple of years since we've got anything in here. Um, and we're moving to different kinds of traps now that allow the uh, deer to escape. We did accidentally catch a doe in here one year, but we keep cameras on the, stand, or on the, uh, on the traps whenever we use them. Uh, or when we used to use them and so we could know anytime anything went in there because we don't want a sow or a boar to sit in here for days at a time and have a chance of, of dying uh, we want to make sure that we we harvest them before they uh, before they die so usually within about um, i would say unless it's the middle of the night we're usually here to harvest the animal within eight hours or less of it getting of it getting trapped um, we don't do a lot of trapping on the property anymore. There used to be a lot, and as we drive around, and as you see these videos, and as we move on, you'll probably see a number of traps that are around, but they're almost never used anymore. So we're developing a new one. I'm working on right now, one right now that, um, that is a corral trap, and it'll have a feeder in the middle, and they'll have a way that the pigs can get in, but they can't get out, but there's no top, and it'll allow the deer to jump out. So that's the... Anyway, this is one of our old ones I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at. But let's head on, and I'll show you where... Uh, I'll show you where the pigs mostly bed at and where they we mostly hunt them at. So this area that we're in here, this is kind of hog heaven, if you will, straight down the road here, and you can see where it dips down. At the bottom there is a creek and it runs under the road, there's a culvert there, and it runs uh, all the way from the right all the way across to the left. And this is pretty much where the hogs hang out. It's a low-lying spot, it's wet, it's full of hardwoods. There are acorns and other uh, types of food that the animals care about. And they pretty much live in the pines, and they'll bed in these pines, and then they'll go down in there and eat. Now, it's not unlike the deer, but this area, the pigs have pretty much taken over. And what we have is usually, right now on camera, I'm showing anywhere between two and three is all. There's not a huge population of hogs here. But, um, but sometimes we have as many as 20 or 25 that'll show up on camera. And so um, lately there's two or three boar that are running around. I haven't seen any sows and I haven't seen any piglets, although we did have a group of about 18 piglets between three sows earlier in the fall, right before deer season started. But once, uh, once we started hunting the property, uh, as usual, the pigs disappeared. So uh, we're gonna drive down here and then we're gonna take a look at uh, some of that area so you can see some of the hog sign that's down there and some of the evidence that the hogs have been down there. So, uh, so let's go look. So 
this is the this is that low lying area. And if you look here, you'll see the creek is coming in right here. It goes under the road right here. And um, and this is what they run up and down. And on the other side of the creek, the far side of the creek up that hill, is mostly where I've seen them bed. And on the back side, there's briars and there's vines, and it's so thick you can't even walk in there. Uh, and that seems to be where they bed is up in that area. And then um, and then there's a section up here that they'll bed in, and they come down here into the hardwoods to eat. And so that's why we mostly hunt the hogs here. The rest of the property, there's about 500 acres here, and the rest of the property is almost exclusively deer. Uh, of course, the occasional coyote and, and some bobcats and stuff, but um, and foxes. Um, but it's almost all deer, but this seems to be the hog area. We'll catch them on camera every now and again, exploring other parts of the, ter of the uh, property, but this is pretty much where they live. So let's, keep, let's take a look down here. We'll just walk down real quick. And we'll, we'll be back here in a couple of weeks to hunt. Um, once the hogs have gotten used to all the deer hunters being gone. And if you look, right in here you can see the fresh sign here, still wet. They've been in here digging this up. So they they were probably in here last night in this area. You'll see all the ground there is just churned up. And that's the pigs that are doing it. And I grabbed the pistol earlier because this is, like I said, this is Hog Central. Um, I have, I've been in here before walking, walking along the creek or up on the ridge and I'll see them, they'll come down in here, especially in the summer. They'll be down in here. This is all green and lush, very high vegetation. We'll be walking along and they'll just be sitting in there and uh, we'll hunt them down here a fair amount. This calendar year, or last calendar year, 2023, I think we probably saw 10 hogs taken off the property, which which probably was half the number that were here. Uh, so anyway, this is this is kind of the main area. They love to dig for grubs and insects and whatever they can find under the ground here. And if you look, you'll also notice that we have a ton of white oak and all the acorns they drop. There's some red oak here as well, and they'll drop their acorns at a different time of year. Um, and then surrounding us are a lot of fields, and uh, there's a lot of farmers that farm this area. Uh, there's a dairy off that direction a ways. Uh, so there's a lot here for them to eat, um, but they mostly seem to hang out here. So that's pretty much what I've got for today. Um, I'm glad you came along with us, and uh, we're going to start doing some hunting. Uh, we'll do some fishing and uh, maybe even try some trapping. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but we'll see you next time.